Oh yeah, those sweet, sweet 1911s. Thanks for coming back everybody or thank you if you are showing up for the first time. So today we're going to be talking about the Springfield Emissary 1911. So this is their new offering and it's got a lot of different options as compared to some of the other things that they already have out and some things that a lot of other people that make 1911s have out at the current time. Now, I don't know about you, but I love me some 1911s. So if you're anything like me, you grew up with a 1911 around the house. Maybe it was the first thing you were allowed to take out to the range or you grew into a 1911 and kind of aspired as you saw your father, grandfather, use those on the range while you planked away with a 22. So if you were anything like me growing up on the 1911 platform, I'm really curious, what was your personal or your father's that you got to use first 1911 experience? So being that this is the new model from Springfield, it's got some good stuff on it. So let's go ahead and get into this thing, talk about the specs, check it out. Break it down because it's a little bit different than your typical barrel bushing style 1911 from Springfield. And just go over everything that this brings to market because it's got some really nice stuff. Tack Pack is a monthly subscription box for the enthusiast in your life where you could get everything from belts to keep the pants up, springs to run the trigger faster, things to clean your rifle with, things to hold on to your rifle with, things to make it easier to run your rifle, lights to find your rifle when you lose it, a coffee cup to drink the solvent after you clean it, and the tools to put it all together. My favorite part was the Ambi safety that I got to fit my ballistic advantage build right there. Go ahead and get signed up at tackpack.com. All right, we're gonna jump into that emissary from Springfield Army, right? To World War. So let's go ahead and, and talk about what we get with this in the box, and it is not going to be the <laughs> The uh, Power 10 chip mag, you're gonna get two eight rounders. Let's go ahead and talk about what's coming in the box here, which is gonna be your kind of zip up case. They've gone to this instead of the hard cases. Um, quite honestly, I prefer the cardboard boxes so I can throw them out and recycle them. You get two eight round Metgar mags, which are definitely pretty solid mags. You're gonna have a little takedown tool, which you do not wanna lose. You're gonna need that. You're gonna have your basic instruction manual and everything in here, warranty card, all that, maybe some discounts on some mags, gun lock, chamber flag, all of the basic stuff wrapped up in a cardboard box. So we'll go ahead and get this out of the way and we will get on with the get on here. First, just going over the basic specs on the emissary itself. So obviously we know this is a hammer fired all steel gun. It is the 1911 that many of us love and many of us enjoy out there on the range. Now this is a tester, Springfield did send it in and it came complete with what is called an idiot scratch. If you know 1911s real well, you can probably see it going up kind of in a curved fashion right there. That's called an idiot mark. Somebody pushed up the link pen when they tried to replace it, and that's how you get that scratch. You do that the first time you break one down when you're like 12 before your dad punches you in the face, and if you do it again, it's called an idiot mark. So in this, we're going to have a five inch forged stainless steel bull barrel, and that bull barrel looks nice. Look at that thing, clean looking setup here. So our slide here is going to be forged, our frame is going to be forged, Obviously this is black and stainless. This is the 45 ACP version. They do have a nine millimeter, but they do not have 10, the best millimeter, at least that I know of. So barrel is one in 16 uh, twist, if I didn't say that. 
good stuff going on here as far as that. It will come with our front tritium night sight, white U-notch rear. Overall, very good, easy to pick up, easy to use out there. One piece full length guide rod on this, two eight round mags, comes in at a weight of 40 ounces. It's a 1911 all steel, they're hefty. Total length here from butt to front right there from the business end to the spitter is 8.4 inches. A height total from the magazine well all the way to the top five and a quarter. And the MSRP we will talk about here in a little bit because you can always find them cheaper on the street. So let's go ahead and just take a good walk around this thing. Let's talk about what is different from this to other 1911s or specifically other Springfield 1911s. So from magwell to muzzle or from the feeder to the spitter end right here. We don't have per se like a mag well, but you got your standard kind of chamfered off edge so you can get those mags in there. It does help a little bit, but I am a huge fan of mag wells. So if you're a little bit off, it'll go up in there, especially when there's a round in it. But I do wish there was a bigger mag well on it. So coming up from there, we do get what they call their grenade pattern texture right here. And I gotta say, it is exactly like a pineapple grenade. And I love it because <laughs> it looks great. And it is everywhere. It's on the back strap, it's on the side panels, and it's on the front strap. So a lot of 1911s, this is just smooth right up here. And then there's like a number 25 checkering on the back. This gives you so much grip. If I squeeze this really hard, you'll be able to see that grip in my hand. So you can really hang on to this thing on the range. But we'll talk more about that in a little bit as well. So it does come with VZ slimline grips out of the box and they have that grenade pattern texture on it as well, which is awesome because it gives you the same feel all the way around and it gives you a lot to hold on to. Moving forward from there, standard 1911 mag release. That's what we all know and love. We grew up with it. Standard single sided safety, standard takedown pin right there. We do have a new solid body flat face trigger in there. Little different. Um, a lot of Springfields I own are um, metal triggers or aluminum triggers and they are relief cut or they have windows in them and they are adjustable some of them. So there you go on that one. We will do some pulls here in a second. Very nicely rounded off everywhere all the way up around that trigger guard right there. Very comfortable to get a hold on this thing. And then one of the things I really enjoy about this is compared to some other 1911s is is this little bit bigger squared off trigger guard. I really like that because the modern grip, you need a little bit extra so you don't slip over kind of that traditional style 1911 trigger guard. So I do enjoy that. Coming forward, you're gonna see we have a very nice multi-slot 1913 size pick rail up there, which is awesome. So you can get all the accessories you want on this thing. Taking a look at the other side, it's going to be exactly what the other side of a 1911 should look like. So no surprises here. Standard Springfield Armory logos. You can see right there, nicely done. And then it does say emissary right here. It's just, just a beautiful slide, the way that they've done this bluing on here. Really, really nice. So getting into that slide, let's talk about these serrations in here. They are deep, they are nice, and they give you everything you need to work this from the back or from the front. So they call this a tri-top cut slide. So you can see that it's very, very nicely chamfered off, flat on the top. You've got anti-glare serrations all the way across the top into that front sight. And then you do have your very nice cocking serrations right there on the top of that thing. So if you press check, you're gonna have an easy time. And they are deep and they are big, but they are very smooth at the same time. So they're not gonna tear your hands up. Good stuff there. All around, I'm liking the options on this thing. They did a great job with it. So let's do some of those trigger pulls. Remember, this is a pretty factory setup here, so we shouldn't be expecting anything crazy, but it's gonna give us a nice 1911 trigger, which is what we often compare everything else to. So let's go ahead and get this in play right here. All right, so our first pull comes in just a hair, well, I'll be right at five pounds. So we'll go ahead and work this a couple times. Go a little bit lower here, see if we get something crazy different. 
Okay. Broke again, maybe just a little. Come on, focus in, there we go. Broke a little bit lower, about, uh, about three, four ounces lower that time. So just a hair under five, maybe four pounds, 14 ounces, something like that. We'll do our last one here. Um, I did pull a little lower on that one. That's generally where I place my finger is pretty low. So let's go real low and see what we get here. Okay, so going that low, got right about the same, not too much, about five pounds. So pretty consistent there. You will have some difference in weight depending on where you place the gauge on the trigger and how you're pulling it and the angles. So I'm human. I can't do it perfect every single time. So let's quickly talk about the breakdown on this, which is where this little tool comes in, which is basically just a little L bent piece of steel. You can actually make these out of a paper clip or anything, but we'll use the factory one right here that came with it. So a little bit different on this one, since it's got a bull barrel and everything going on here, we'll make sure she's clear. You pull it back until right there, you can see that notch meets up with where your barrel link retaining pin is. You pull that straight out to the side and then basically just separate your slide from the lower receiver. And this is where this tool comes in. So you're going to need to push the guide rod forward like this. It's pretty stiff and then you're gonna see a hole through it right there. You just drop this in leave it like that. And what that does is it puts pressure on the front end right here, which is the bushing in there, which is kind of a, an easy way to take pressure off the spring. And then you just pull straight back and out. You can take this down. You can take your barrel straight out the front like this. Make sure that link is down. And these are your major food groups when it comes to the 1911 right there and you can clean it as you wish all right so let's go to get this thing back together you just do the exact opposite put your barrel straight back in like that you will leave this like that or replace it if you took it apart to clean it or anything like that make sure the notched end is down feed that through it might be a little stiff at first I'm trying to push it in there Get that out of the way. There we go. So push that forward. You think, and then just push off like that. Let that go. Bring it back onto your lower. Pull back like this. You're gonna have to look through here, right? And you're gonna make sure that barrel link is where it needs to be. And then you are going to push this straight in like that. Don't try to push it up, push it straight in. Otherwise you end up with that mark that somebody else left on this thing. At this point you just check for function. Safety works, safety off, trigger works, trigger reset, and everything is good to go. So let's go ahead and talk about the price, the variance, and of course the performance. And is there anything I would add or change? All right, so I am a little bit biased when it comes to the 1911s, not specifically Springfield, but just the 1911 uh, platform in general. Love me some 1911, like I said. Now this is a tester that was sent out by Springfield. So thank you to them for allowing me to beat on their $1,200 gun, not to give away the price because you can find it a little cheaper than that. But the MSRP, which we'll tackle first, was like right up at that like 1250 1289 something like that i saw a couple of them out there online for like 1150 ish but when you want to get a 1911 especially a good one a decent one you're gonna pay that's just how it is uh they're all steel forged components it's an all-metal gun they're typically a little bit more handmade you're gonna end up paying a little bit more when it comes to a nice especially a really nice 1911 because they can get up to $3,500, $4,500, $5,000 mark, depending on some of the crazy custom brands out there. So you're gonna pay more, but that's to be expected. So for that hard earned money, what are our variants here? You're gonna have a four and a quarter, a five inch, and you're gonna have a 45 and a nine millimeter. I don't think they're coming out with a 10 millimeter. I don't think they make a 10 millimeter 1911 variant right now. They might, I haven't looked at their site. So if they do, definitely let me know. But this is the 45, throwing those fat slugs down range. And let's talk about that performance because with that price tag, you do get that 1911 performance. 
specifically the 1911 trigger that everybody chases. That linear straight pull trigger in a very light, crisp and clean break with that hammer is just unlike anything else out there on the market. And anytime you try to compare it, you know, a, a geometric arched trigger to a straight pull linear trigger like this, you're never gonna get that same result. So you can chase it, and I'm happy that a lot of manufacturers do, but you get that 1911 trigger, you get the grips on here, you get that grenade texture, you get all those nice options up top with that slide, the serrations and everything. And my favorite part is gonna be that squared off trigger guard, and then you've got that accessory rail as well. So it comes very nicely equipped and it does perform on the range. If you're a 1911 person, you can run 1911s very fast, very flat. I'm a little out of practice with them these days. I haven't been carrying my 1911s as much, but this thing is gonna give you all the performance you would expect out of a 1911. Now with all of the options that this thing did give us, is there anything I would change or add? And there's gonna be two things. One, Magwell, $1,200-ish range. I would like to see a Magwell on there, and I know that's kind of asking a lot when it comes to something like this because it's just beautiful. I mean, look at the slide, the way that it shines and shimmers. I'm sure that's an expensive coating. Uh, the other thing I would change on here, give me an ambi safety um, because when I shoot, usually I'm doing off-handed drills, and it's just kind of that's a lot of safety to try and get up and around to work with your offhand. You can come over with your thumb, work it like that, and that's a technique that I used to use. But having a ambi safety is just a huge plus, especially if you're going to use uh, any 1911 for work. You know, whether it's security, law enforcement, whatever you're doing, whether you're a cool Marsoc guy and got to carry the re-release of the 1911, whatever. So cool stuff, but would like to see a ambi safety and a mag weld to really just kind of Put the cherry on top of this cake that is the emissary now other than that i think this thing is absolutely cool but i don't think it would be my first choice especially off of the springfield lineup because they have some other pretty cool options in the operator series yes they're a little bit more expensive but they give you all of those things that i would like to see on this one that and this thing it just you know it's already got one scratch on it and it just kind of takes away from the overall beauty that is this thing so if you want one that you're going to run uh, like a scalded dog out there, you probably don't want one that has this slick, nice coating on the slides. You're going to want something that's a little bit more natural. So it wouldn't be my first choice, but it's definitely cool. And there are those people out there that are just collectors and avidly love the 1911. I think they are the people that would probably really enjoy something like this. Or maybe you're, you know, occasional shooter. They break out the 1911 for everybody to use. I think that's kind of the market. I think for hard use on this one, it's one to look at one of the other models when it comes to hard use. Collector, weekend shooter, occasional break out the 1911 and show everybody what you got. That's probably gonna be it. But favorite thing on this one, that, all that texture. It can be a little much for some people. I absolutely love it, especially on that front strap because you can just really get a hold of this thing and go to work on the range with it. Well, that's what I've got for you all today. Go ahead, get subbed up, get belled up, turn those notifications down there, that little bell icon all on, so you get the notifications when the videos come out. Again, I'm curious, what was your first 1911? What was your first experience with the 1911? And how did that go for you? Let me know down in the comments below. If you guys like anything you saw here, I'll leave those links down below. All that stuff helps the channel. Huge shout out to all of my Patreons. Appreciate everything you guys do. If you guys want to support the channel, you can check out Patreon or check out Shall Not Comply, the link for the clothing for the channel down below. You guys get out there, have some fun on the range. Remember, if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. I will see you guys on the next one.